data movement is perhaps one of the greatest challenges of high performance, 3D microsystems, heterogeneously integrated computing platforms. On the chip today in these heterogeneously uh, GPUs and high bandwidth memory uh, chiplets, we, have, we actually have tremendous amount of bandwidth, multiple terabytes uh, per second. Once we get into the socket or the interposer where we have highly interconnected all to all uh, types of networks, the bandwidth is still pretty high, by, but typically down by about an order of magnitude to perhaps up to a terabyte. But as soon as we get off the socket and communicate among a larger scale system, the bandwidth drops tremendously. And in addition to that, the power consumption associated with moving data over these longer distances increases. So we have almost two orders of magnitude gap or taper between the intra-chip connectivity, the intra-chip bandwidth that's available in our systems today, and the system-wide uh, uh, bandwidth that's available. So photonics has been a very promising technology. And what it can bring to the table is essentially equalize that bandwidth. Bring the same amount of bandwidth that we have within the chip out across the entire system for the same energy consumption that we have on the chip, namely sub picojoules per bit. There are multiple approaches to bringing photonics to the chip. For example, 2.5D integration is one approach that provides pretty good density, higher than two-dimensional. It gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of being able to put chiplets um, of different types and provides a fair amount of thermal isolation. But it's still limited from parasitics uh, on the bump interfaces and traces and is still quite limited from the bandwidth density that, that's achievable uh, in terms of a few hundred gigabits per, per millimeter at best. And there's the complexity of adding an interposer design, a high performance interposer, interposer design. Monolithic integration is really promising because it really, this is, this is an approach where we fabricate the photonics in the exact process as the electronics. They're monolithically designed in the same uh, uh, way for fabrication. So it's not even known which, which is photonics and which is electronics. And this is a really fantastic approach. And so it, it minimizes parasitics, extremely simplifies packaging. This is a really key point and improves the thermal dissipation. But still the bandwidth density is limited because the topology is two-dimensional at the end. We have to put the photonics and the electronics on the same plane. And it limits our ability to optimize the photonics and the electronics separately. So we, we may not be able to use the latest uh, CMOS node, for example, or optimize the photonic device design. The most aggressive approach is perhaps to use three-dimensional or 3D integrated uh, um, uh, packaging uh, where we get really the, the most performance in terms of the best shoreline aerial bandwidth density and also um, the ability to have very low energy consumption per bit because the, the photonics and the electronic planes are in very close proximity. The photonics gives us a tremendous bandwidth density because we're able to modulate many, many channels of, of data onto the same pin, if you will, onto the same waveguide. But there's still challenges in terms of the packaging because now you we are still using two different um, materials, uh, not, not different materials, but different um, chips, and the thermal management in the three dimensions. So this is an example of 3D integration that we've done under the PIPES program, first led by uh, Gordon, Dr. Gordon Killer, and more recently by Dr. Anna uh, Taki Pedretti, where we've been able to get up to five, over five terabits per millimeter squared and, and uh, sub picojoules of energies per bit. This is a very promising technology for being able to deliver uh, optical I.O. system-wide. You've heard earlier in the panel about the ability to disaggregate the system and we envision optical connectivity, for example, in in what you see on, on, on the right side of the slide, where we can separate, for example, high bandwidth memory into different 
uh, integrated uh, uh, chips with very, very high bandwidth, low energy connectivity, and disaggregate the system, not limited to a single interposer any longer. Thank you so much for the opportunity.